Welcome to the art gallery. Here, we'll be looking at video game cover art. There's a saying, don't judge a book by its cover, which is true. Sometimes the cover does not accurately represent the work that is inside. However, the cover is a work of art in itself, and it's the first thing you see. It was especially important in the old days because we didn't have the internet to tell us what the game was like. The cover had to tell us everything. So it's about time we give game cover art the attention it's due. Usually we sit down and play the actual games to review them in depth, and that's all fine. We will do that. You will see a new nerd episode in time for Christmas. But since it's the season of giving, I'll be giving you a little something extra. Every day until Christmas, we'll be observing some of the most exquisitely bad works of art from game history. Pro Wrestling for the Sega Master System. Absolutely stunning. This work is all about irony, in the sense that it uses the term pro for professional, yet goes for an amateurish style. The background grid paper is reminiscent of the graph paper used in school for math and geometry. Students always doodle on that paper, right? And I don't mean they doodle on it, I mean they, I mean they, they, they shit on it, I mean they scribble on it, okay? Anyway. It looks like something a bored student would draw during class when they're supposed to be doing their work. The most striking thing about the cover is the wrestler who has no head, yet is doing a chokehold on a head. Is it his own head or somebody else's? Whatever the case, it's a very non-traditional wrestling move. Once again, it's ironic that the cover is so traditional, with the same font and background as other Sega Master System games. They all have a uniform look, but this wrestler who stands outside the corner of the game box, his method goes literally off the grid. Let's assume he is wrestling his own head. It's body versus head. It depicts the internal struggle of brains against bronze. The wrestler who develops his muscle over mind shows that muscle is winning the battle. And after all, the term professional wrestling implies the staged form of wrestling to entertain at the audience's suspension of disbelief. Can we suspend our disbelief? Or does this cover make no fucking sense? Mega Man for NES. Splendid. This is what you call a work of fine art. This is the expression of an artist's nightmare as he finds himself stranded in a homemade mustard and blue spacesuit surrounded by radioactive asses in tropical sci-fi land. The dollar store brand colored pencil art style is meant to give the sense of the childish feeling of pre-adolescent fears and tension. And that's why they held an art contest in Nintendo Power magazines for kids to submit their own designs, and then they picked the winner. But that's not true, I just made that up. What actually happened was they picked the loser. You have this proportionally incorrect and aesthetically awful human figure that shrunk down to a minor detached element in the overall composition, framed by rounded corners, to be framed within glowing neon grids, to be framed within the enclosing canvas. If you even have a chance to look at what's going on, you'll see Mega Man has no neck, and is wearing shoulder pads as if to deliberately hide his head like a turtle. He's cowardly shrinking into his own suit, as you can see by the wrinkly oversized sleeves. I mean, the way his body is like leaning is kind of like he's doing a dance, like, hey, look at me, I'm hip, I'm cool, check me out. Look at that tired, weepy, pathetic face, which is no more intimidating than the way he's holding his gun. You're looking down the barrel, yet he's pointing the gun to the side. And wait, wait, a gun? Doesn't Mega Man have an arm cannon? Oh, never mind. That's just in case you ever happen to have played the game before. You know, Mega Man. Whoever played Mega Man? Certainly not the people who designed the cover. Well, for Mega Man 2, they got a better artist and apparently gave them much more time. But why is Mega Man still holding a gun? And why is his foot turned like he broke his ankle? Look at Crash Man giving a lap dance to Dr. Light. Look at him feeling up that thigh. And what about the European Mega Man 2? What is going on there? Is that his arm or a hovering bowling pin? Or, I don't know, some kind of vaginal ultrasound thing. In Mega Man 3, he's blasting a robot right in the crotch. He's smiling and looking at, he, he's looking right at the crotch like he knows what he's doing. In Mega Man 4, he's jumping off a cliff while Pharaoh Man is standing on top of the fortress. On top of the fortress. 
By the time they got to Mega Man 9, which was a downloadable game that didn't even need a cover, they were like, yeah, we get it. It's a joke now. Ha ha. Shatterhand for NES. Marvelous. It's a beautiful portrait of a man who just felt the need to smash his fist into the game's own title. He's breaking his hand on the word hand. How profound. But he's not really hitting it dead on. He is perhaps punching at something else and his knuckles just happened to graze it. It was an accident. He can't see with those ultra dark sunglasses on, but he only broke off part of the H, so it's all good. People question what the Mona Lisa is smiling at, but I wonder what is the Shatterhand man punching at? Or could it be that he's not really punching at all? Notice the way his arm is bent. It's too relaxed to be a punch. I think he's giving you a bro fist bump. His expression seems to say, SUP MAN! With the exaggerated perspective of the fist in the foreground, the detail should be more focused, more present, more realistic than the descending planes. But instead, the fist is as unnatural as possible, with odd folds that resemble foreskin on a penis. And did I mention the biomechanical skeletal structure underneath the skin? No? Well, that's because you don't see it at first, because it's almost hidden behind the bulky text. And only one knuckle is hitting the letter, yet two knuckles have damaged flesh. It begs the question, what did he punch the first time? To piece together the whole story, I'm gonna look into the background. My guess is that's supposed to be the Empire State Building. New York City. That's a real fucking place. You can't be a pussy to live there. But this guy just couldn't take it. So BAM! Fist flying! Shattering as it hits the fourth wall reality! So what's with the Terminator thing going on? I think it represents man and machine. Specifically, humanity's dependence on technology and tools. The hand as man's biological inherent machine. The hand to do man's dirty work. Which reminds me. Whoever made this cover was jerking off! Action Fighter for the illustrious Sega Master System. A masterpiece, undoubtedly. Let's begin with the title. Action Fighter tells you everything you need to know. Action suggests battles, shootouts, vehicle chases, and explosions. The single word action encompasses everything we expect in a game on the primitive subconscious level. Fighter, what do you know? A generalization of more of the same. Action implies fighting. Fighter implies action. No two words in the history of civilization have so eloquently overstated one another. There's no question of what kind of fighter this is. Not an idle, casual, go with the flow kind of fighter. Could this game by any chance be um, some kind of puzzle game or uh, video poker? No! Action fighter, damn it! Just to make sure, without any doubt, you know what it is. Boom! Action fighter! It hits its mark more effectively than a cow pissing on a flat rock. It's well worthy of the trademark. That's right, patent that shit. It's so brilliant, you wouldn't want anybody stealing that name. This isn't just any cartridge, it's the Mega cartridge, also trademarked. Notice how the G droops down and touches the Mega. That's class. Look how the background grid enhances the obviousness of the condensed kerning. And then there's an image on the cover too, right? Oh yeah, that's it. It's down there. It occupies less than a quarter space of the overall canvas. Nothing suggests action and fighting more than a magnifying glass on a highway. This is a special magnifying glass that doesn't make things larger. Instead, it forces the perspective into a Hitchcock vertigo effect. Is this really an action game or some kind of detective game? It seems the detective is using the magnifying glass while driving. Rather than shutting down the street and getting up close to survey the area, this detective is gonna fly right through, emphasizing the importance of high-speed action over tedious scrutiny. The lack of details on the buildings intensifies the feeling of tunnel vision, to be focused on one point, rushing to a particular goal, a clue. One vital clue that we so eagerly wish to have. The cover leaves you in suspense. What is the clue? Is there a clue? Did the human being who made this have any clue? Shingen the Ruler on NES. Here we have a decently rendered male face, which seems to disappear into an image of an army riding on horses. 
It's as if a cloud of less detailed, more generic art floated in front of him. Why would this be so important that it needs to intrude on the focal character? It's as if the background took a bite out of the side of his face. I believe it symbolizes the conformity to a larger society of socioeconomic repression. It should be noted that sometimes the art on the box is different than the art on the game cartridge. On the cartridge, he's obscured even more by the goddamn instructions! Why is this on the cartridge? Seems like somebody really hated that artwork and wanted to do everything they could to cover it up. Or maybe they never seen a video game before. The instructions come with the game! You know, on paper! In a little booklet! You don't need it on the cartridge! Of course it's not the full, detailed instructions, but they sure fit as much as they could! Just for a quick reference, in case you're playing the game and you either lost the instructions, or you find it easier to look at the cartridge while you're playing the cartridge. And this would only work in a top loader. If you had the original NES model, you wouldn't even see the fucking cartridge. Maybe it's meant to be read like some kind of art house poetry. Yield. Money. Disaster. Product. Yeah, this product was a disaster that you should yield before spending money. Shingen seems to be peeking out from the cluttered mess of periodic table-like frames of clinical information as if to say, Hey, it's me. Me. Look at me. Look at me. This is horseshit. I can't even pretend. Does this make you want to play the game? Was it so complicated they had to put the rules on the cover? Is it because the game is called Shingen the Ruler? They thought it must have the rules? I'm surprised they didn't put an image of a measuring ruler on it. Well, we're gonna need to find the longest tape measure in existence because I didn't know they stacked shit this high! <laughs> phalanx or Phalanx for Super Nintendo. Well, the game is a 2D space shooter. It says, plain as day, the hyperspeed shootout in space. Many would say this cover has nothing to do with the game. But of course it does. There's a spaceship. See, they got it in there. That little magic Disney Tinkerbell sparkle whizzing by way, way, way back there in the background. There's no getting around it. The main focus is an old man playing a banjo. Because isn't that the first thing you think of when you think of a hyperspeed shootout in space? But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy is in the game. Yeah, in fact, he's a major part of the game. You just never unlocked that part yet. This is a mall Santa Claus. This is what he does the rest of the year. He's sitting on his porch, playing his banjo. He's been drinking a lot of moonshine. So he fantasizes and pictures himself flying a spaceship, shooting aliens. Perhaps a projection of his deep-rooted racism against anyone or anything foreign. Or he's just a jolly old drunk playing a song about a hyperspeed shootout in space. I wonder if the actual man in the photo knew how to play the banjo. Was he just posing with it? Or could he have actually been playing something when this picture was taken? What am I doing here, motherfucker, Super Nintendo, fuck is that? Had this cover looked anything like it was supposed to, it wouldn't have been as interesting. There's thousands of generic space shooters out there, so this was an unconventional, yet ingenious way to make it stand out from the rest. It worked, because after all these years, we're still talking about it. This is the North American version of the cover. In all other parts of the world, it actually focused on the spaceship, which looked like, uh... Um, well, this version wasn't phalanx, it was phallus. Snow White for PlayStation 2. This is terrifying. This isn't Snow White. This is more like evil porcelain dolls come to life. That should be a horror film by Full Moon, as evidenced by the full moon in the background. This is the stuff nightmares are made of. This will haunt your dreams for eternity. We will tear your soul apart. Your suffering will be legendary in hell. Eat the fucking apple. Phoenix Games also made this scary looking Pinocchio game. I guess they specialized in fucked up fairy tale covers frightening young children. Somebody didn't understand the idea of cover art. It doesn't have to look like the shitty in-game graphics. And am I reading this correctly? Does it say Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys? I thought it was the Seven Dwarves. Were they trying to differentiate it from the Disney film to avoid a lawsuit? 
Well, it was originally from Grimm's Fairy Tales, so if they're going to avoid the name, what about the likeness? It obviously looks like the Disney characters, although twisted, fucked up versions. And are they seven boys? Really? Boys? Or more like old men? Besides, I only see four. Where's the other three? Well, there's three trees. Maybe the witch turned them into trees. Or perhaps the trees are a representation of humanity's dying relationship with nature. The game is rated three and up. I think that means these demonic fuckers need to take three more souls. Oh, oh no, 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 no! Ah, get me out of here! New York for NES. Oh, action in New York. Action in looks like it was written with a quill pen. Is that the type of font you'd see on the cover of a science fiction action game or in a line of text from the Declaration of Independence? It's hardly noticeable, but New York is printed so big and clear just so you know where this game takes place. It reminds me of that game Alien Tiger Meteor Massacre in Middletown, New Jersey. Anyway, that's some banner, like a bumper sticker graphic, with the Statue of Liberty in the center with a big halo or Nova Blast around it. This is a nice graphic. For a t-shirt or a hat. This is like something you'd see in a gift shop. This is the perfect postcard to promote New York City because nothing says New York more than a man screaming point blank at a robot. I tell you, crazy shit happens in New York City. People screaming at robots, a man shattering his fist against the fabric of space and time. Maybe that robot is the Shatterhand Man after he finished punching all the flesh from his body. The man's face radiates with anger, beaming with expression while the robot stares back at him with a flat, featureless face like a metal trash can. Look at the intensity, the raw emotion, so powerful that it harnesses the lightning. The lightning portrays nature, the only thing that comes between man and machine. It splits the contrast between the imperfect, emotionally driven human being and the unflinching synthetic creation of his own design. The robot represents technology. The man represents humanity's frustration yet unwillingness to live without technology. This does not look like a man who is in combat in a science fiction world. This looks like a man who is mad because his iPhone froze. The man is clearly not ready to attack the robot. Wouldn't his arms be up? How did he get so close before raising his arms to fight? That's because he has no intention to destroy it. He just wants it to do what it's supposed to, but the machine doesn't care. It looks like the robot has just shot a laser from its eyebrows and we just happened to catch this image the very instant before it blasted the man right through his eyeballs, splattering his brains all over the place. If only he had his laser reflectant visor down. Dumb shit. By the way, the game is a 2D space shooter, the European version of a game called SCAT. It's the same game, only the title is different. SCAT stands for Special Cybernetic Attack Team, but the word SCAT actually means animal shit. Rallo Gump, an obscure DOS game from the 90s. Well, it's cute. In an infantile way. It's like a child exploring the world for the first time. This child dreams of flying like Superman while wearing a weird hat. Notice the bird-like creature devoid of wings, but the human also devoid of wings is the one who manages to fly. It depicts the freedom of one's own imagination, of ambition to defy all implausibilities. Below, the ground is cross-sectioned out so we can see the fish, with the lack of imagination, being trapped in his own boundaries. The eye on a silver pedestal that sees the world through the child's vision. The only way to see true magnificence is to open your eye big and wide. Behind the mountain, the most terrifying part of the whole image, a scary face that came loose from a totem pole. The creature of nightmares, but the kid who is in control of his dreams has the monster barricaded behind the mountains, locked away as seen by the keyhole, but with no key in sight, the nightmare is effectively locked away. Or it's somebody who took a lot of drugs. Well, what kind of what kind of cover is this? Rallo Gump? What is a Gump? Like Forrest Gump or the Gump from the Oz books? This is one of few covers where the artist put their name on it. No. And a free game comes with it, just in case Rallo Gump doesn't catch on.
Ghost Lion for NES. It's medieval aerobics time. The tights, the sword, the jewels, the Egyptian snake armband, the wild golden hair going past her ass, the oversized sleeveless shirt that looks like she borrowed it from Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what? This is awesome. I want to see somebody cosplay as the Ghost Lion Girl. This is an 80s metal album cover. There's no doubt about it. But at the last minute, they decide to turn it into an NES game instead. I want to hear the band Ghost Lion. There was an 80s band called Lion who did the Transformers movie theme song. There was also White Lion. And apparently there is or was a band called Ghost Lion, according to MySpace. So what about the lion? Why is it behind the mountains? Is it giant? It doesn't look like any of these elements exist in the same place. Notice how three-dimensionally detailed the girl is compared to the flatness of the lion and the pink background plane. I think that's all part of a cardboard cutout and she's posing in front of it. Kind of like one of those promotional movie theater backdrops you can get a picture with. She sees the ghost lion, thinks it's so funny, she gets a picture with it, but she happens to be cosplaying as something unrelated. That's exactly what's happening. Why else would she be smiling and looking right at the camera? If she was really going into battle, she'd look much more serious. But the one part that bothers me is that you don't see the whole sword. It takes your eyes off the composition, like she's poking at something. What is happening? Is she stabbing somebody? Is that why she has that devilish grin? There's no question what decade this is. This is the 80s. But you wanna know a little surprise? The game came out in 92. But could you imagine if she was wearing flannel and baggy jeans? That would have looked stupid. <laughs> Eliminator Boat Duel for NES. Um, yeah. Here's what I think happened. They hired somebody to do the cover. They told them the game is called Eliminator Boat Duel. So naturally, the cover gets finished at the last minute. They take one look and go, um, we said Eliminator Boat Duel. This is just two people riding on a fucking boat, but there was no time to redo it. But they had to do something quick to make it more exciting. With less than an hour to send it out to the printers, the quickest solution was to paste on these flags, just so you know there's some kind of race going on, to add neon streaks to the back of the boat to emphasize speed, to add this cheap splashing whirlpool effect, and to change the color of the water to bright glowing pink, except that part they missed. Before, it would have looked like two people leisurely riding a boat. Now, it looks like two people leisurely riding a boat on an alien planet. Instead of all these added effects, it might have been easier to just change the name to Vacation Boat Ride. If you look closely at the woman's hair, I don't think it's hair. I think it's a surfboard and she's leaning behind it. What's with the glowing mountain peaks? Are those supposed to be sunsets? Two sunsets? It is an alien world. Maybe in the same solar system as Tatooine. Or is this what the Earth looks like after Electro Brain zaps all your brain cells? Ah, just looking at it, it's burning my eyes. It's, get it off the screen! The European cover was much better. Absurd, yes, but it looks more like a boat duel. Clearly a race is going on since there's actually more than one boat, even though the guy and the girl are still relaxed. But that's because they're so good at winning. This is Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. How can I not mention the giant magnificent breasts? God damn, and they came so close to being covered by the Nintendo seal of quality. Somebody said, make sure to move that down a little. Imagine seeing that on a game when you're five years old. In the US, we definitely got the shittier end of the deal for this one. Even the end label couldn't spell Eliminator. Eliminator. This is Street Hockey 95 for Super Nintendo. So let me guess. They didn't know if it was gonna be a fighting game or a hockey game. So they got Lil John and asked him and he said, what? So they went with a font and color scheme to imitate Street Fighter and asked him to do an impossible levitating kick. And then he said, okay, but okay wasn't good enough. So they added hockey elements. And then he said, yeah. This is like MTV regurgitated all over a Super Nintendo box. I don't get any of this. What's with the Barbie doll girl? That mask he's wearing? That mean dog on the cover? Just to prepare you. Warning, this game is badass. Woof, woof. 
There is nothing correct about any of the sizes. Is the girl small? Is the alley enormous? Is the man giant? Is that his shadow? Why doesn't the girl have a shadow? Why was she pasted in last minute? And for a game about hockey, there's very little hockey equipment on the cover. That stick he's holding is awkwardly turned, so it might as well be a canoe paddle. I like the way he's pointing at you as if saying, yeah, you want to play this. You know you do. You know you're going to be coming back for Street Hockey 96 and 97, which never happened. Although there were other street sports games like Jam It, yeah, I'll tell you where you can jam it. The game used the multiplayer adapter, Hudson Super Multitap. Just in case you'd ever want to play Street Hockey 95 with four people at a time, as soon as anybody sees that cover, they go, oh, okay, okay, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Irritating stick for PlayStation. Irritating stick? Who puts the word irritating in the title of a video game? Does that make you want to play it? I don't even know what kind of game it is, but I don't care. I'd rather go out in the woods and play with an actual stick. Who buys a game called Stick when you can get sticks for free? But that bright, bold font tries to sell it the best it can. Like this is going to be the most exciting thing you'll ever see. See it for the thrill of a lifetime! One night only! Irritating stick! The comic style zapping effect seems like it desperately wants to emphasize how irritating this stick is. As soon as you touch something with this stick, zap! It's so obnoxious it fills the entire background. There's no room for any other artwork. It's all about the electric force of this horrible stick. The original game was similar to Operation or the wire loop game where you need to avoid touching anything or else you get an electric zap. But the word irritating doesn't describe it too well. It's just a bad choice of word, kind of like when Nintendo had a console called Revolution and they changed the name to Wii. It's not even like a sword or a spear. Instead, a cheap plastic lightsaber. You know, the kind that light up. Except this one hasn't even been lit. Yeah, the batteries are dead. Moving on to the hands, it looks like the crappy in-game graphics of the time. Did they know that on the cover to the game you're allowed to make the artwork more realistic? I guess it doesn't matter when you have a stick that's so irritating, it emits lightning. It begs attention. And I've given it. <laughs> Crack out for NES. This is what happens when you smoke too much crack. This is clearly nothing more than a bad drug trip, or it's just a bad ripoff of the game Fast Food, or it's just the Twizzler's mouth making every possible appearance it could in the 80s. Your eyes have no room to rest on this cover. The way it's tilted, I can't look at it without going like this. It gives you a dizzying effect. It feels like you're flying into its world, rushing into the simple one-point perspective as the objects on the receding planes come whizzing towards you. Eyeballs, teeth, skulls, gloppy drops of mustache bubbles, neon cannonballs bouncing off the walls. This cover screams, what the fuck? God damn, help me out here. What's going on? This cover is so intense. On the cartridge, they had to cut off the skull, just to give us a little break. Yet the alternate placement of the Nintendo seal of quality allows us to see the green guy popping up from the hole in the floor. He looks so frightened. See? Even he couldn't take it. Where in the universe or multiverse would a place like this ever occur? Well, if you don't dismiss all possibilities, then just for the sake of existence... Whoa! A brick tunnel full of baby blocks flying out from the far reaches of space. It has no beginning and no end. An infinite, zooming chaos! But if you look far into the background, that tiny white space, is that a wall? Are we going to smack into it like a bird hitting a plane? Or is that an open doorway, the light at the end of the tunnel, a white purgatory? Could you imagine going from one extreme to the next? First, it's overstimulation, and then complete sensory deprivation. This artwork is a metaphor for life. It's crazy, but then one day, it's all gone. Cock-in for Commodore 64. The game 
is called Cockin. Even though it involves chickens and has an alternate title, Chicken Chase, some whack job decide to call it Cockin. And instead of chickens on the cover, people wearing chicken hats, dressed like ragdolls with lifeless dummy faces. The dude's holding a shark on a string that bites her elbow while she hands him a testicle. Really, what else is it supposed to be? An egg? Then why is it flesh-colored? The cover is extremely rare. No high-quality image of it exists. So at first, I thought he had a nutsack on his chest. Until I realized the second testicle is just the negative space between her fingers. The color blends in with his chest. How hard was it to make an egg white? And it's not perfectly oval either. It's a testicle. You know that expression, I'd give my left nut? That's what's happening. In the actual game, you're a rooster chasing hens around to mate with them. Chase the chickens. What are you, Rocky? The intricate folds makes the woman's shirt seem realistic, but the body is so lifeless, it's as if they put a real shirt on a mannequin body. She has no collarbones and a long neck. Yeah, but what about the testicle? How could you talk about something else? It's right in the middle. The whole composition draws your attention to it. In between, the man's fist, the triangle shape she's making with her arms, the heads both leaning to the side, and right in the center, look at the gonad, the shark, the cockheads, the gonad. Now, find out how they all relate. Because your guess is as good as mine. Treasure Master for NES. This is a surreal stream of consciousness that represents sensory overload to the video game brained kid of the 80s. This is his fantasy. Everything awesome and rad that ever existed all comes to the party. There's covers where the artist didn't have enough time, but I think this is one instance where the artist might have had too much time. We gotta sell the game. What do we do? Sharks are popular, but put a fucking shark on there. How about submarines and spaceships? Y yeah, that's good. What about robots? Gotta have a robot and a spider on a circuit board. Uh, yeah, do that. Pyramids, mushrooms, bubbles, a Transformers grid pattern, space. What about treasures? Fuck it, just have a kid with sunglasses and zebra patches, giving thumbs up, smiling at the consumer, saying, yeah, you like all this shit. The kid is just as happy as the artist. Nobody's ever made such an amazing box art. It's win all the way around. It depicts narcissism. The kid is looking at you like, yo, I'm so cool. He is the treasure master. Or perhaps he's calling out to you in desperation, trapped in some kind of floating rectangle, sort of like the General Zod prison thing from Superman 2. The game was created for a contest by MTV in which gamers would put in a code, they'd complete the game, and then they'd get a number to call in and win prizes. Which makes sense because this looks like something MTV barfed up. You know, Castlevania 3 also had a contest. Win a trip to Dracula's castle. Yes, Dracula's real castle. I bet that's where the kid who won the Treasure Master Grand Prize ended up, in Dracula's dungeon being tortured for all eternity. Carnage Rally for Game Boy Advance. Good God. There are no two elements in this picture that belong together. It's a mishmash. The computer generated title, the blurred image of a car, a blue haired screaming maniac photoshopped in front of it. I don't even know where to start. What is Carnage? Why is the letter R singled out? The N could have just as well sprouted the flags. Why is the car so blurred that you can hardly tell what it is? Why is the man so sloppily cut out? And why is he leaning at such an awkward angle? Perhaps the car is ramming into the side of his head. What was the purpose of dyeing his hair, or excuse me, photoshopping his hair blue? Is this some sophomoric acting or what? <laughs> I've heard the game itself is actually pretty good, but who'd want to play it based on the cover? If it's a game about racing, show us the car! Not some goofy guy who just made the most epic photobomb in history. Let's say I did buy the game based on the cover. I'd be disappointed if he wasn't the main star. I don't want to race cars. I want to be the blue hair guy who runs around the track and goes, Haaah! Maybe he's a former racer, but he never achieved success. So he's now depressed and losing his mind. So he dyes his hair blue. He shows up at the raceway and starts making a total mockery of the profession. Maybe that's what he does every day. They're used to him. Yep, that's him again, clowning around. Just carry on with the race. 
Don't draw attention. That's what he wants. Just ignore him. Hellfighter for NES. Is that a title or what? Hellfighter. I like the way the title's zooming into the foreground, glistening like shiny steel. That's the way you do it. Without much else to look at besides a plain blue background, let's get straight to the point. It's simply a naked man holding a skull. Has this guy been doing some bodybuilding or what? He's so buff that his muscles take on alien features. Look how pointy his knee is. And his hand completely disappears into the light aura of the skull. The skull is not very pronounced. The glow needs more transparency so you can make it out. Why is he holding a skull anyway? He's staring at it like, yeah, I like death. The crotch is bulging out from the tiny underwear, which is conveniently covered by the text oval. Somebody clearly looked at it and said, we can't show that, cover it up. Which makes me wonder, has anyone seen the original art? Hmm. Even the Japanese version blocked out the crotch. The whole world was saying, hey man, put on some damn pants. The sword looks like it's sticking in his ass. He has no belt, nothing to strap the sword onto, unless you buy that it's hanging on the back of his thong. It's in his ass! You heard a sword in the stone? This is sword in the ass! He shits green rocks. What do you expect? The guy's so macho, all he eats is stones and minerals. He shits them out, and the dragon's licking at him like yum yum. Ugh, God. Hellfighter. Looks like hell to me. Scrap your dog for the Atari 7800. <laughs> What's with the nose? What's with the nose? Who cares about the dog? Look at the nose. What was the point? Everything else is pretty sound, but some wacky artist decided to give him a huge nose, just for the hell of it. He is the star. Never mind that it's called Scrapyard Dog. Maybe he's the dog. The idea of faces inside of circles is pretty funny when you think about it. Like here's the circle and then somebody's meant to pop their head up into it. We were only meant to see the dog. He was supposed to lift his pet dog up in there, but he came up too at the last minute. And that's the image. And there's nothing we can do about it. Maybe it's meant to be a freak show. The circus colors support that. I like how the dog is sort of looking at the nose like the dog isn't sure about it. And the man isn't really looking at the dog. His eye line is going off somewhere else like he's talking to somebody. I, I can't be in the picture. Or he's talking to the dog, you know, keeping it comfortable for the picture. Hey, pee buddy, pee buddy, that's a good boy. People say that pets sometimes look like their owners. Well, if the dog had his nose or he had the dog's ears, it would be pretty crazy. This is junk. What do you expect with a game called Scrapyard Dog? <laughs> Rollerblade Racer for NES. Rollerblades, radical, radiant, blazing colors. That's the 80s. That's what it was all about. All those who lived it, trust us, we can tell you. That chalk pattern background, that's what the world actually looked like back then. You'd be rollerblading with your flat top hair and your rat tail in the back, listening to Michael Jackson on your Walkman, slapping high fives with Voltron. You'd be eating your Mr. T cereal and Pee Wee Herman would come by and play Pac-Man with us. It happened all the time. It was so crazy, there wasn't even such a thing as temperature. No, the man's wearing a sleeveless shirt while the girl is bundled up like it's the middle of winter. Don't judge a cartridge by its box. Check this out. The cartridge has no background. I suppose the box was finished last. All it is, is a solid hot pink. Let me tell you, in the 80s, that color was the most bodacious thing. You wanted hot pink. Seriously, our eyes were attracted to how bright it was. Look at it, the way it burns into your retina. That's awesome, give me more. Nowadays, most people seem to associate pink with feminine, but back then it had nothing to do with that. Didn't matter if you were boy or girl, hot pink, damn it. It's so vibrant that it's actually bleeding into the graphics. The labels on cartridges can fade a little. So imagine how pink it was when the game was new. It was so fucking pink it was made to last the ages. The contrast on the people is boosted so much that they blend together. At first glance, it looks like both bodies have merged into an eight-legged creature. Eight legs? Eight decades? The 80s! This game is the living embodiment of the 80s. 
Oh, well, the game came out in 93. Well, fuck everything I just said. Here's a hot pink screen for you to look at. Yeah, you like that. Yeah, stare at it long enough, you'll grow a mullet. Killer Kong for the, Z Z -X, the ZX Spectrum. Uh, in, in America, we would say letter ZX. But Killer Kong, I can't look at it. How could you look at that grinning gorilla without losing your shit? The mystery of the Mona Lisa's subtle smile is nothing compared to this. What is this gorilla smiling about? Like he or she, probably she because of the breasts, knows something that you don't. But this is Killer Kong, so maybe this motherfucker's thinking about killing you. The way it meets your stare is unsettling. It feels as if it is actually looking at you, and the moment you look away, it's gonna lunge out of the cover and show you exactly what it means by Killer Kong. It kinda looks like one of those public domain VHS tapes, or like somebody was trying to release King Kong on VHS, but they didn't have the proper rights, so they had to make this half-ass cover. Notice how the edges of the gorilla are so rough, so it's almost being swallowed by the background. It burns into your eyes and invokes visions of cotton candy bubblegum dreams, but it's all a trick. This game is very rare, so it's hard to get a good image of it. I wish I could tell what that round thing is on the eye. It looks sort of like a monocle. This is a high, fashionable gorilla who likes to examine things up close, particularly your innards. The game itself is a clone of Donkey Kong, and there were many Donkey Kong copycats floating around at the time. That's what happens. Somebody makes a successful game, and then others copy. Monkey see, monkey do. You see the monkey, and the monkey see you. Hammer and Harry for NES. A symbol of testosterone. This guy is Mr. Macho right here. This is the manliest man ever. My cock is so hard! What's with the Rambo headband and his eye that's off center? Weird. Look at him screaming out the side of his mouth like Sylvester Stallone. On the cartridge, it looks like he's trying to hump the text and logos, just as he's about to bash your face with the Donkey Kong sledgehammer. This guy is crazy! He's wrestling bears, drinking gasoline, riding a bull on a highway, playing baseball with his cock! He just went mental and started a rampage through a construction area. All the workers are falling to their doom. Look at the poor guy still holding his jackhammer as he plummets from the top of the building. Notice that Harry's wearing the IRAM logo on his belt buckle. Remember when Mario wore a Nintendo shirt? No, I don't think that ever happened, at least not on a cover. You know, this game was originally an arcade game in Japan, and it was ported to the Famicom first. Why didn't they just use the artwork from the Famicom version? Nah, it's gotta be fucking American and macho! I like how the title has a white box behind it, as if it wouldn't have stood out enough in front of the blue sky. It looks like they forgot to put it there, and then at the last minute, right before it went to the printers, somebody looked at it and went, oh fuck, we gotta put the title on there. Quick, quick, get, take it from the instruction manual or something. Hurry, cut it out, slap it on there. Hammer and Harry, a guy you don't wanna fuck with. Super Duper Sumos for Game Boy Advance. From Midway, the same company that brought you Mortal Kombat now brings you three sumo wrestlers smashing their fat asses together. Dude, it's a cover for a game endorsed by Nintendo that advertises itself with asses being smashed together. It's Butt Bash 3000. They're all smiling, they like it. You can hardly see the third sumo wrestler in the background, and I know this is because it was from a TV show that had to include all three characters, but they couldn't figure out a way to make it so you can see all three of them. It throws off the symmetrical layout, and the shadows on the ground contradicts the absence of a light source on their cartoon-style bodies. Yeah, but who cares? They're bashing their butts together, ramming their rear ends, clashing their cabooses. Or maybe not. I first assumed that the action graphic in the middle was meant to represent the impact of their heinies hitting, but maybe they're actually pressing their asses together, just holding them there, and then farting simultaneously! Blowing farts up each other's assholes, creating an explosion! 
The combined farts of three giant hamster-shaped men creates a blast more powerful than a nuclear bomb. It's so powerful that it sent them into an alternate dimension. You see the city in the background? Just barely, right? That's because their reality is fading away as they enter the next dimension. This is science here. This is time travel. When Doc Brown needed plutonium, that's because he didn't want to have to get the gas from three sumo wrestlers doing butt slams. Ultimate stuntman for NES. Somebody clearly wanted to create the most masculine cover ever. Guns, sports cars, throw it all in. The meat-headed message seems to be clear. Gun plus car equals awesome. This is no ordinary stuntman. This is the ultimate stuntman. Is this a guy who does stunt work or does he go around shooting bad guys? It's a stuntman turned action hero. Notice the big bird which is partly obscured by the words. It's holding a star as if to deliver it to the man. And something is randomly exploding behind him. Just to break up the monotony. There wasn't enough going on. How about the car? Well, it's a car. Which makes perfect sense when juxtaposed against a squid. A, a, what? A fucking squid? What is it doing? Halfway hidden near the man's crotch. He's so macho, he's holding up the squid with his dick. Ugh, God, I can't, I just I can't look at it all at once. It's hitting my brain too hard. Let's view it just a bit at a time. Okay, ultimate stuntman, uh, bird, action guy. I get it, I, I'm with it still. Uh, oh, okay, okay, that's where I draw the line. If awesome overload was the whole point, then where's the hot chick, where's the sunglasses, the dinosaurs, the robots? I don't think they got enough stuff on here. Look at all the wasted space. This is one of those unlicensed games. It's one of those gold cartridges. The squid gets mostly cut off. If you had the cartridge without the box, you'd be wondering what the hell that is. On the back, it says, do not drop, do not get wet, do not leave in direct sunlight. Can you feed it after midnight? Then there's that weird switch. What does that do? Position B, only use this position if the game does not work with position A. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. X-Man for Atari 2600. Wow. I don't know what part of this picture is demanding the most attention. The woman who's in the process of stripping down to her bare body, or all the crazy shit going on over there. The woman is depicted in a realistic way. Lots of detail has gone into the shape of her body, the lighting and the tones of her skin. Sure, her nose is a little flat, but the guy on the right is a full-blown caricature style. He has no neck, exaggerated teeth and eyes. Those two different styles are so distant from one another that I don't even think the same artist created them both. Or it's meant to portray the separation between the glamorous supermodel and the geeky, insecure guy. But let's not skip over the title, X-Man. X-Man? To quote a line from Enter the Dragon, you come right out of a comic book. A Marvel comic book published on September 10th, 1963 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. You know, X-Men? Not just the name, the logo itself. It may not be identical, but it comes pretty damn close. Well, X-Men didn't turn the M into a crotch. They missed out on that. What does X-Man mean anyway? It's on the dude's shirt too, or half of a shirt, whatever he's wearing. I suppose because it's a pornographic game, one I missed in my Atari porn episode, that the X means like triple X, man. I don't know. What about the fact that he's grabbing his crotch? When I see a man grabbing his crotch next to a pair of runaway scissors, that can't be good. Or what about crabs? Oh, no, I'm not gonna explain that one. Or the Twizzler mouth making yet another appearance. What's up with that? All these things are after his crotch. He's trying to protect his crotch from the risks involved in paying this hooker as he runs through the never-ending maze of sexual frustration. But he's smiling. There's some kind of joy to it. And that's when I noticed, with the position of his hands, you should be able to see both hands, but you only see one. That must mean that his right hand is going through the opening of his underwear. He's jerking off. That's what I call a video game cover. 
Pretty good video for Christmas Day, huh? I give you X-Man for X-Miss, triple X-Miss. A woman getting ready to show her tits, a guy with his hand down his crotch. It's filthy, but you wouldn't want it any other way, would you? Merry Christmas, you filthy animals.